So in this video today, we're going to go over the quiz six talk. Um, the overall percentage on this for all the geometry students on this quiz was a 62.5%. So um, first of all, again, you should know the drill here by now. So um, if you have version A, we're on number one. If you have version B, we're on number three. I um, want to talk to you all about the fact that 59.6% of you all got this correct. So if you recall, what we need to do to solve for this problem is we need to add these two angles together. And when we do that, they equal this exterior angle. So we're going to say 4y plus 7y plus 6. That equals 9y plus 24. So 4y and 7y, those are like terms. We're going to combine those. So that's 11y plus 6 is equal to 9y plus 24. Subtract 9y from both sides, so you get 2y. And then we're going to subtract 6 from both sides, so that gives us 18 over here. So y is equal to 9. Now, it's asking us for angle DEC. DEC is the inside angle. So we're going to DEC is this angle right there. So we need to plug in the 9 to the exterior angle and then subtract that from 180. So 9 times 9 is 81 plus 24. This is equal to 105. So that means this inside angle is going to be 180 minus 105. And that's why that interior angle is 75 degrees. So this next one is number two, and it's version on version B is number seven. So this one two was 59.7, pretty close to the first one. It says, are the angles below congruent? If so, why? So on this one, um, the first thing we, that we know that we can mark are these vertical angles, but we also know that we can mark some other angles because of alternate interior angles. So we know that we can mark that angle E is congruent with angle A because they're alternate interior angles, and angle D is congruent with angle B because they are alternate interior angles. So now we have three angles, but we cannot pr prove congruence with three angles. Um, the, the other question I have is how many sides do we have? It looks to me like we only have one pair of sides. Y'all see this tick mark up here. So if we go around that triangle, we could use angle, side, angle. Look here, angle, side, angle. Or we could have also used angle, angle, side. So we're looking for which of those choices is there. Obviously, we said we can't use angle, angle, angle to prove congruence. Angle, side, angle is there. These other two have three side, have two sides and three sides. And obviously, we only have one pair of sides that are congruent. So obviously, it can't be those, OK? So this next one is 3 and 4. Version B, it would be 1 and 5. So it says triangle ABC is translated along the vector 3, negative 5 after being rotated. 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. What are the coordinates of the final image point A under this composition of transformations? So, so now I see this keyword here after. So that means we're going to do this 90 degree clockwise rotation first. And remember, that means we're going here 90 degrees clockwise. So that would be Y comma negative X. So we're going to do this first. And then we're going to do the vector. So that's what we're going to do with point A. And point A over here is what? Negative 1 negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 3. So we are going to go ahead and rotate it first. So that means we're going to apply the rule y comma negative x first. So that's going to be um, 3 comma 1 for our a prime. Let me write that so you guys can read it. a prime is 3 comma 1. And then we're going to apply the vector to it. Okay, so that means we're going to do x plus 3 and y minus 5. So that means our a double prime is going to be 3 plus 3 is 6, and 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And so that's why our answer is 6, negative 4. All right, so the next, and by the way, did you notice we actually passed that one? That was the one that we passed, so I think we're finally trying to get that down. Um, the next one is um, these two angles, number 4. Are these two angles try? Are these two triangles congruent? If so, give the correct congruence postulate. So we know that we have a shared side here, right? And then remember, if we have a pair of alternate interior angles, it's where the transversal intersects the two parallel lines. So that's going to mean that this angle is congruent with this angle. Now notice we also have out here another pair of sides, right? So if we go around this top triangle, what do we have? Side, 
angle side. So that's why this one is side angle side. And again, notice we have two sides and every other choice has one side, okay? All right, version B number four, uh, version A number five, and version A number six, and then version B number two down here. So if you remember, we know that these relationships exist. It says if the length of YZ, that's this whole thing down here, is 66, then we know that these parts are 33 and 33, right? And we know that also this is congruent with that. So this is the same length as those, because remember, this is a midpoint, right? So it cuts that whole side YZ in half. So that means this also would be 33. And that's why the answer is 33. And we got 87.2% on that question. Awesome, guys. And then with number six, um, this was one of our lower um, scoring answers. Um, it says, are the triangles below congruent? If so, why? And what is the current the correct triangle congruent statement? So on this one, um, notice that we have an angle and then another angle and then a side. So our answer is angle, angle, side. And then, I mean, I only see that once. There's four different, uh, four, three other different answers, but that is our answer. Um, and then we can double check it. B, A, D. So we went from nothing to one arc to the right angle. So up here, we're going to go from nothing to a one arc to the right angle. So it's B, C, D. So on number seven, um, which is also number eight on version B, we got 59.4%. It says angle a triangle D, E, F with a pre-image point of D, E, and F is translated seven down and three right and then rotated 270 degrees. What is the image of point F? So here, um, we're going to make this an X comma Y uh, um, rule, okay? So this is seven down, so that's minus seven and three right, so that's plus three. So I think we're still struggling with this a little bit because of the 59.4%. And then it says rotated 270 degrees clockwise again. So if we're going 270 degrees clockwise, we're going up there. That rule is what? Y, negative Y comma X, okay? So this one's straightforward. We don't have to change um, the order because there's the word after is not there. So we're going to start with our point F, and that's going to be negative 3 comma negative 4. Um, then we're going to apply the rule x plus 3, y minus 7. That's going to get us to negative 3 plus 3 is um, 0, right? Right, negative 3 plus 3. And negative 4 minus 7 is going to be negative 11. Okay, then we need to apply the 270 degree clockwise rotation. So now we're applying the rule negative y comma x. And so that means that they're going to change positions and y is going to change signs. So my f double prime is going to be 11 comma 0. All right, so this next one um, says in triangle PQR, point C is the centroid. That means now that we have that 2 to 1 ratio. So QZ, it says this whole length right here is 21. So um, what we want to do first is take that 21 and divide it by 3, right? So that's going to give us 7. So that means this is 7, and then there's two parts of 7 up here, 7 and 7, right? So this would be 14 up here. So that means that CQ is 14. All right, number 9 and 10, or 10 and uh, 6. Are these two triangles congruent? If so, give the correct congruence. Okay, so we again have a shared side here. So this time, notice that we have the hypotenuse, right? That's across, that's the side across from the right angle. And then we have another leg. So that's why this one's hypotenuse leg, 67.5%. Mm, okay, not stellar, but um, then it says, given the two triangles are congruent, give the correct congruent statement. So this one is congruent by side, side, side. First, I want to say that. It doesn't say that in the problem, but we should be able to see that. So then we're looking for why are these triangles congruent? So... Um, this is what I like to do. So I could put an arc here and an arc here because that's between two, 1 and 2 and 1 and 2, right? And then here we could say um, that angle A, B, A, C, that's between what, 2 and 3, and this is between 2 and 3. So let's put two arcs here and two arcs up here. Now you should be able to see what our congruent statement should be. So you should be able to see, okay, so first of all, C, A, B, B, A, D, a, B, C, B, C. Okay, so let's just look at what we have. 
So A um, is congruent with what on the other side? What well, has two arcs? C, okay. So I'm just going to put some, you know what, let me move this over and let's do it with a little more space. So we're just going to put some triangle symbols here and a triangle symbol there. Because see, then we can map these. So A and C, right? And then B has one arc and D has one arc over there. And then what has um, nothing on it? C here, right? And then what has nothing on the other one is A. So now we're just trying to map those letters, right? So, um, and we notice that A maps to C there. A to C. C to A. And then we have what? B to D. B to D. So that's the only one that maps up. So you can try it and look. B here um, does map to D. A maps to A. But this D over here map to um, what does it map to? There is no D over there. You notice that? Um, so that's why those are not congruent. Okay. I mean, you could keep working through that the same way um, and see that there, that's why. And look right here, we had our A, B, C, and we had C, D, A. So that one's not right. If we go B, C, A, then we should have D, A, C, and we don't have D, I, C here. Okay. All right. So our next one, it says there are three triangles in the image below. Are there a pair of that are congruent? The answer is yes. Um, we can see that JN is congruent with KL, right? I don't know why that says uh, JN and JN. It should be KL, y'all. It should be KL. Let me change that. KL. Um, and then angle N is congruent with angle L. And then angle H and look, we're in this, look at the two triangles. Let me just see if I can show you. This is one of our triangles right there. And here's the other triangle. Can you guys see that? Okay, so when we start looking at one triangle versus the other, we have triangle H, J, N. We started with two arcs and we went to nothing and then one. So over here, we're going to go two arcs to nothing to one. So it's G, K, L. Okay, and they are congruent how? So if we go from here, we go angle, angle, and then our side. You see that? So that's why they are congruent.